Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome back. Alright, this is part two of the new series for creating a game based off of the Cinti Studios assets, uh, the Polygon series. Um, currently, right now, I've got Polygon City, Polygon Heist, and Polygon Town all combined inside here, and I will be adding more, but this is what I want to get started with because they have some of the content that I needed to get started with. So, what I want to do in this video is as we look, we're on the town map, and we are the police officer from the city pack, and we can walk around town and check things out. All right, we're not necessarily always going to be the police officer. That's just what I'm using for right now. And what I want to do is, since we have a temporary HUD or heads-up display, the bottom right-hand corner of the screen there, that does have accurate reading for our health, our hunger, our thirst, and stamina. So what we need to do is create some pickups and actually make a sprint system so that we can actually go faster and drain our stamina bar and be able to fix that. We'll try to get the stamina um, going. It's not going to be the priority for this one. What we're going to do is start off with our um, character, which in this case is player underscore base. And we have our event begin play. And we have our variables for our health, hunger, thirst, and stamina. They're all based off of a value of 100, which gives us a percentage scale. So what I want to do is, and it's not the best way to do it, but I'm not the best developer in the world, so yeah, whatever. We're going to do event tick. And what I want to do is create a series of functions. And... What I want to do is create the hunger system and thirst system. So let's create a custom event. We're going to call this um, hunger system. Or right, let's actually change the name of it. We want it to be our hunger drain. All right. So. And it's not replicated. We don't have to worry about anything else like that for right now. We want to have our hunger drain. So what that's going to do is we need to, and I'm going to hold down the control key and left click and drag in hunger, and it's going to give me a get node. We want to get our hunger, and then I want to hold down the alternate key, left click and drag in hunger, hunger, and that's going to give me a set node. So these are the ones we're going to be working with. We're going to get our current value and we're going to set our current value and then we're going to create a um, a system of starvation and then we'll do dehydration and we'll go from there so to cause our hunger to drain we want to start off with we want to set our hunger we want this to tick every 10 seconds. So let's go with a delay and we will set our delay time to 10. I'm going to change these values temporarily and once I get everything set up and working. So for now what I'll do is I'll set it as 1. So with our delay of 1 second we want to set our hunger and we want to set that hunger number to hunger minus so it's a float so we want to do float minus float and let's go ahead and take away and this is going to be a drastic number 10 okay again these are all going to change we just want to see a drastic change for right now to know that our bars are actually working so to start off with once it starts we're going to wait one second we're going to take away 10 hunger and that's where we're going to set our hunger to. So to see that that's actually working, I need to go ahead and from our event tick, we want to type in hunger drain. We want to add that that function, our new custom event, into the system. So now we hit compile and save. And if we go in here and hit play, and we watch our bar, our hunger bar is drastically dropping down you can see it's steady going down and now it's zero so 
we could also do um, just to see. Let's do a print text. Not necessary. It's just a visual, and we we can see a number of what our health actually or hunger actually is here. So let's do that. It'll convert it to a float. I'm going to delete this here in just a second, but I want this to be a visible reminder of what we're actually doing here. So we can see what's happening. So now we hit play. You see in the upper left hand corner 90, 80, 70, 60. We can see a visible number as well as the percentage bar moving on our HUD. But then whenever it drops to zero it then goes to negative numbers. So we don't want that to happen. So the next thing we want to do is I'm going to go ahead and dump these. And we need a branch statement so I'm going to hold down the B key and left click. So now we have a branch. And we need to tell it to, and I'm going to do another git node, or actually we can, we don't need the git node just yet, so we can do this right here, and we want to do float, and we want to find out if our, our float, or our th hunger is less than a certain number. So if our hunger is below zero, if not, it does nothing. Then if it is below zero, then we want to hold down the alternate key, left click, drag it in, and have a set node. If it is below zero, then we want to set our hunger to zero. We don't want it to go below zero. Now again let's go ahead and throw our print text in here so we can see what's going on we'll see that number then I'm just going to connect this node to this node it'll automatically convert it and now we should be able to see our health bar go down but we'll watch our numbers in the upper left hand corner and it's not showing the numbers okay why is it not showing the numbers Oh, okay. It's only to show the numbers there because we didn't tell it to. Um, let's delete that for just a second. And we want to actually put it back inside here. Print text. We want it to go here so we can actually see what our value is before we reset it back to zero. So we want to get that number, and we are going to go ahead for now and just grab hunger. Connect it. You can't connect it directly to there, so we want to get a git node and connect it there. Doesn't matter how nasty this looks, I'm going to delete those in just a minute. So now let's take a look. So there we've got 90, 80, 70, 60. It's going to count down, and when it gets to zero, let's see what happens. it's negative 10. So it totally ignored what I was saying here. So I'm going to go ahead and dump those out. So what we need to do here is we're going to set it to zero. If it's less than zero, we can actually change that to, well, we'll leave that. So now if we are at zero, we need to keep setting it at zero that's fine but at that we want to add a delay and let's go ahead and set that to one second for now we'll change these values as we need to to make it seem more realistic so then we want to get our health and then we want to set our health So now we can do this, and we want to do a float minus float, and let's add, let's do it as 10. Okay. And all this will get tweaked. Um, so now what's going to happen is when we get down to zero, it should in turn start deleting our health. So now we go in here, we're running around, we're all happy and stuff. Oh no, we're getting, we're starving. Our food's going down drastically. So what happens when we get to zero?
And there goes our health. So that works. Now we are dead. So we'll worry about a death function here shortly. So I want to clean this up, make this a little bit neater. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all this and I'm going to hit C and we're going to call this our hunger systems. So that's that. Our hunger system works. We can drag it over here and get it out of the way for now. So the next one is going to be our thirst and it is going to be essentially the same exact thing here and you know we could actually if we wanted to copy all of this and let's go ahead and create a new custom event custom we're going to call this our thirst drain and let's go ahead and paste that in now we're going to change all this stuff here in just a second but what we need to do is go back over here to our original hunger system let's change this value to 10 and 1 those values again will change more later and we'll change that to 1 so it's not a drastic and we'll change this to 10 so if we look right now um, now this is our thirst drain is not going to work yet because we don't have it connected into here yet so if we look at our values now then it's going to be a lot less drastic so as we're running around our hunger will now after 10 seconds it will drop down ever so slightly there we go so if we're dying of hunger then <coughs> it will start affecting our health so here let's go ahead and control left click drag in thirst let's delete that connect that to there because we were lazy instead of redoing it all manually um, let's alternate left click our thirst bring that in here we want to dump that move that in here so we're setting our thirst and we want to keep the drastic numbers on it for right now and again we want to alternate left click and drag in our thirst so we get a set node and so this will affect our health now so we want to set our thing back to zero that's fine if our thirst is less than zero we need to set it to zero that should in theory work however we need to go ahead and add thirst drain in here so now we put our custom event linked into here and there we go say so compile and save and this should be just as drastic as the other one was so there goes our thirst bar. Man, it's just kicking on down there. We're dying of thirst. But are we dying from thirst? We'll find out here in a second. Our thirst bar drops down. It hits zero. And there we go. We're losing health. So that works. So now let's go ahead and change these values back to 10, 1. And like I said, these numbers will all change later so that we have something going on a little bit different. So now every 10 seconds, we're going to lose one um, hunger and one thirst. And I want to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to highlight all of this. I'm going to hit C and I'm going to type in thirst systems. And I'm just going to grab the bar and drag it up here get it out of the way so now we have our hunger and thirst systems done and they're run off the event tick which is again probably not the best way to do it but you know what it works for now and we'll stick with it now this right here the um the player controller the the hud and that kind of stuff i'm going to select all of these i'm going to right click on it and 
I want to collapse nodes. And then I want to call this my HUD display. This just compresses things down, makes it a little bit easier to look at. And if you need to work on that section again, just double click on it, and there it is. And all I'm going to do is just drag a link from here to the output node. And now when I hit compile and save and click back on event graph, if we look at our event begin play, now we have an exit node or exit executable node. So there, everything's working so far. Now, since that was relatively quick, we're only 15 minutes in, um, we can go ahead and let's go ahead and start with the, um, the, the health pickups. I'm going to close our player for right now. We know that it works. Hey, how are you? So our health works, our hunger, our thirst. We haven't done the stamina yet, and we haven't done the sprint yet. So let's go ahead and start doing the pickups. First 15 minutes, all we did was make the, um, you can see our hunger and thirst just kicked down by one. So we can see that they're working, so that's good. Um, I'll change the values again for testing here in just a second. But let's go ahead and look at our pickups. I'm feeling better than I have been the last couple days. I know for one in the Polygon Heist, if I kick down in here into the Items folder, we have a health kit. Really cool looking health kit. So that's going to be our health pickup. So let's actually go ahead and in our content, our root folder, let's go ahead and create a new folder called Assets. A new folder called Pickups. And let's go ahead and do a new blueprint class actor and we're gonna call this our health kit um, okay, for now we're just gonna have one later on I'll come back in and make uh, multiples of it to have different values so that um, you could have a major kit a minor kit things of that nature so let's just go ahead and go with health kit and as we open it up the first thing I want to do is make sure you're behind us right there I'm gonna go back to my items I am going to select the health kit static mesh that I want to use and now I'll come back over here to add component add static mesh and it's already selected so there we go we want to add a little bit of a coolness factor to it so um, while we have it selected, I want to add a component and rotating movement just because, you know? Let's so actually take it and pick it up just a little bit. And now we're all set. We can actually give it some functionality. Um, I'm going to delete everything out of here. And I'm going to start from scratch. And what I want to do here is look at my viewport again. I want to add in another component, and it is a box collision so that it actually works when we run over the top of it and we can pick it up. And I want to go ahead and move that box collision up, but I want to resize it a little bit. Let's go with 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0.3. Mm. Now let's actually go on the, the C height, point one. Nah, screw it, let's make it, that point three is fine. But we need to make it wider and deeper, so point five, point five, that's good enough. And we just want to lower it down. And since it's snapping in those two locations, I don't want it to snap there, so I'm just going to turn off snapping here and then drag it down to like that. So, and I'm going to return snapping onto it here. So I'm going to go back into my event graph and compile and save, get into that habit. And the first thing we want to do is go to our box collision. And I'm going to left click and drag that in here. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm actually going to right click on that and add event 
on component begin overlap. So when we do this, what we want to do here is from the other actor, I want to drag out from there and cast to player underscore base because we only want the player to be able to pick these up. Now, as player base, we need to first off see if our health is below zero and or you know below um we'll screw it. We'll we'll set it at 99 for now because 100 is full health. If we're less than full health, then we want to be able to pick it up. So we want to get health. So we got our variable health here and we want to check to see if our health is less than and I'm going to put it at 99. Screw it. You can change values to whatever you want, but you know this is what I'm going to do here. If we have less than full health, um, then we could have done it that way. I mean, we could have done less than 100. Whatever, you know, that's going to do the same thing. If we're under 100, if we're not at full health, then we can pick up this. Then we need to go ahead and drag off from as player base. We want to set health. connect that up to here. We want to set our health to... Let's drag it over from here and let's drag off from... Um, yeah, let's go ahead and drag off another one. And we'll do float... No. Float. Learn how to spell, dum-dum. Um, float plus float. So for right now let's go ahead and, and set our health kit to give us 25. So it's gonna give us 25 health and you know doing it this way it's gonna allow us to add health but what if we're already at 99 and we don't want to then be 124 health um, so we can trigger it to go back to our player and fix that but we can also do it here and again we can drag off from this one again here and say and that we don't have to we actually can come off of here if our float is um, equal to or greater than or just greater than 100 then we want to drag off from here and set health no learn how to spell to 100 so we won't go over 100 so it's going to check at this point if we have now gone over 100 um, and actually we need a branch node in between here So, if our health is greater than 100, then set our health to 100. So we don't go over. If it's false, then we're not worried about it. We could actually have put that on the other side, but it's fine here. So in theory, our health pickup, when we walk over this. Now, at the end of all of this, what we have to do is we need to we could destroy the actor and it's going to make it go away and never come back. However, what if we want our item to respawn? So, um, let's drag in a reference to our health kit, our static mesh, and set visibility To unchecked and then we're gonna add in a delay and let's go ahead and make it 10 seconds and then we want to go ahead and do the same thing again set visibility 
after that 10 second delay and enable it again. So in theory, once we walk over our health kit, it's going to vanish and then not come back for 10 seconds. So let's actually go over here to our pickups folder. And I'm going to drag one and put it right here in the map. Let's go in and hit play. So now when we walk in here, we can see our health kit is spitting on the ground and it looks lovely. Can't use it yet, so. Now, it just finished. Our health wasn't below um, 100. So we're going to have to look at that real quick and see it respond. So. Oh, see, that's a problem. We set the visibility of it to be invisible, but the rotating movement's still working. So, uh, we either need to disable that or just remove the rotating movement. Um, the way we did this um, was to get a reference to our player and you know what I'm going to restart it uh, mostly it's working but I want to make sure I'm right and I'm showing it the right way so what we need to do is we need to get health so now we want to get our health and from here we need to find out um, we need a branch node is our health float is it less than 100 so we only want this to work if our, our health is less than 100 if we're at full health we don't want the player to be able to pick this thing up at all so that it doesn't get messed with um, for now, I'm also going to get rid of the rotating movement because, yeah, that's just going to be a problem until I, I go back and revise that. Um, so, it's going to check. Are we less than 100 health? If so, the, if yes, then at that point, let's go ahead and we need to set health. And I'm going to go ahead and get another one so we can just flow with it. Get health. We want to set our health to... Now you could also come back here off the faults node and create something like print text or print whatever and say, hey, you don't need this damn health kit. Go away. Now, something of that nature. You can throw text up there. You're already full health or something of that nature if you want to. I'm not just yet, but so we want to set our health to a float plus float. And we said we're going to give ourselves 25. And then what we needed to do again was we need to get our health again. And we're going to need to set our health again. So I'm just going to grab two, two more of those. So what we want to do is, and now we could have used this value right here, which I probably still will. Um, so once we've, done, we've added 25 health, we're going to check to see if our health, and actually let's drag off from that one, see if our health is greater than 100. And where I screwed up before was I did not put the branch node in to connect here and here. So if our health is greater than 100, then set our health to 100. We don't need this other one. So now what we're doing is we're checking to see if our health is less than 100 
and if it is less than 100, then we're going to add 25. Now, if that makes our health a, more than 100, then we're going to set it back to 100, and then we're going to go ahead and grab our health kit, and we want to set visibility, and I'm going to control C and control V, because we're going to use a second one here in a second. So we want to set our visibility to unchecked, delay by 10 seconds, and then get over here and be neat. After 10 seconds, we're going to set our visibility back to visible. New visibility is visible. So now, I know, I know, I know, shut up. I didn't connect you. Compile and save. And let's go back in here and play again. We are at full health. So, now another thing we can probably go ahead and do is we have collision on that. So, we can't just walk through it. We can't pick it up because we're at full health. So, I'm going to click on the static mesh and I'm going to come down here to my collision presets and I'm going to say no collision. Now we should be able to walk through it. There, we can walk right through it and it's no problem. We can't pick it up because we don't need it. We're at full health. So, how can we test to see that that works? Well, let's build something that I like to, to create. Something to, to be a, a way of testing our health. So I want to build a blueprint actor. Let's create the pain pad. And the first thing I want to do is add in a component of a cube. And I want to set this to 2 by 2 by 0.1. So we have this nice little square here. And then I want to add a component of a box collision. And I want to re resize that to 2.5 by 2.5 by, oh, you ass, 2.5 by 2.5. Nope, it'll actually work as 3. 3 by 3 by, yeah, that's fine. The one, and then I'll raise that up just a wee bit. And now I'm going to go to my event graph, compile, and save. Let's dump these guys off. And you can't, you can't save too much. Right click on our box collision. On component begin overlap. Other actor. Player underscore base, which is our character we're playing with. And when our player steps on it, what we want to do is get health. And we want to set health so what we're doing is we're going to get our health and we want to do health minus or float minus float let's do 10 damage and there we go so now when we step on this pain pad it's going to take away 10 health so we'll drag that into the map and there's our pain pad now, right now, we are at full health. We cannot pick up our health pickup because we don't need it. But now we'll go over here and, oh no, we just took health damage. And, oh no, we took more health damage. Oh, screw it. Let's do it one more time. So now if we run over our health kit, it gave us our health, but it did not go away. There, it went away that time. Why did it not go away the first time? So let's run over our pain pad a few more times. And okay, now we need our health kit. Run over it. It did not go away. Why? Oh, why must you taunt me on Real Engine 4? But it went away that time. So let's let it respawn one more time. And it vanished that time. Now, whenever it comes back. We're at full health, so if we run over it, it should not go away. 
I think I know what I did wrong, but we're going to worry about that later. So it will not let me pick it up because I went full health. And there we go. So that works. Now, if we wanted to with our pain pad, we could actually go in here also. And instead of it doing pain, we could re-trigger that to be hunger and thirst. So we can basically come back over here to our um, pain pad and we can make a duplicate and we'll call this our hunger pad go into it and let's do get hunger and set hunger and all I have to do is delete that connect it there and connect that delete that connect it to there and now this is our hunger pad and we can do the same thing for thirst so compile and save and let's go ahead and put the hunger pad right here and screw it we'll duplicate that one and we'll make our thirst pad these are great for testing your health hunger and thirst systems um, and your different pickups so let's get thirst and we want to set thirst and again we're going to delete that connect there and then we're going to delete that and connect it up and now our hunger and thirst pads will work and let's actually move this one over to here and let's grab a thirst pad now notice that they're all the same color um, I guess if we wanted to pain pad we can come over here to our cube um, we don't have a, a material that we can work with that would do anything um, but if we had different colors or wanted to make our own custom materials for it, that's fine. So we know that once we step off the curb, our thirst is going to be on the left side. And our hunger is going to be on the right side of the pad, of the uh, where our health kit is. And then our pain pad is going to be on the other side. So good enough. Then again, all we got to do is step on them and see, oh no, we're hungry. Oh no, we're thirsty. And there goes our thirst, thirst, and we want to go ahead and let's dump our thirst down. I guess we could sit here and jump on it. And now that we are below zero on our thirst, if we watch, our health should go down. Not by much, but we only told it to go down by a little bit. So now I can pick up my health kit, no problem. But we're still dying of thirst. So our health is going to continue to go down until we do something about that. So let's look at our hunger and our thirst pickups. Well, what do we have? What do we have? Oh, I've got tons of props. and This is the heist pack. I'm probably going to switch back over to the um, city pack. Um, that's the props. Look at items. All right, no food there. So let's actually go to the Polygon City. Go to our meshes and props. All right, so we got that one is a hamburger. That's correctly sized. Now, if you were to look, you see this slice of pizza right there. But if you look at the actual sign, it says large sign. So if we drag that in here, uh, that's a damn big slice of pizza. Now I want pizza. I'm hungry. I'm a fat kid. I'm always thinking about food anyway. And it's like burger. If I drag that one in there, holy crap, that's a little bit much of a burger. Even for me. But by looking at the size, I know that this one is going to be the right size. So that was our hunger pad. So we're going to put that down. We'll actually use a cheeseburger for right now to be our actual item. So I'm going to go back to my pickups folder and I'm going to create a blueprint 
and I'm going to create this is a master food item so uh, food underscore master and from there we're going to add a component we're going to do it just the same way that we did with the, um, the other one so we add the first component the easy way to do this is to go back to where it was props folder burger add component static mesh and there it is it's already pre-selected so we can do that and we're gonna do this the same way we did for our health kit I'm gonna pull it up just a little bit actually no I'm gonna leave it where it is so if we want to place it on a table or something like that we have a working hamburger and this is gonna be our master in which we can create children of and then change maybe the mesh or whatever else so this being the master we want it to be the the and yes, I did have a cheeseburger for lunch. That's why I'm not not why I'm using the cheeseburger. It's just the first food item that I found. So we need to add in a box collision. And then we want that box collision to be sort of appropriately sized. So you could either manually do it by grabbing here and you know try to figure out what it is. 0.5, 0.5, that's good. And then what about this one? That's good. That's more than enough. You don't want it huge, but you don't want it too tiny. So now that we've got that, compile and save. Go to our event graph. And now this is, these are all normal. I have not added sounds in yet. We're going to probably do that in the next video. So I want to get this one knocked out and get a drink knocked out and that'll get us close to our one hour mark per video like I said I'm breaking these videos up in one hour segments so they're easier to follow that way you don't completely fall asleep with my boring ass alright so now from our box right click on it and add event on component begin overlap and from that other actor player underscore base that's just the name of the, the third person character that I'm using so my preference my game, I can do whatever I want, right? Anyway, so what I want to do is the same thing we did for the health kit. So what we're doing is getting our hunger, and once we get our hunger, let's go ahead and, and set our branch node in. We want to check to see if our... Um, float is less than 100. If we are less than perfectly fed, less than 100% full, then we can pick this up. Otherwise, we don't want it to do anything. So, that way you, you can't go around and steal all the cheeseburgers and nobody else can get any. Because you know some schmuck boy will run around and steal all the cheeseburgers and you'll be starving to death. And they're full and they don't need them. So if you are less than full health, then yes, you can pick that up. So at that point, we want to, let's go ahead and get hunger and set hunger. We're going to need those. So we want to get our hunger and we want to set that to give us, you get over there, quit being a schmuck. Um, we want to add what let's add 25 so that's going to give us 25 hunger for eating that cheeseburger damn it I had cheeseburgers for lunch and now I want cheeseburgers again damn it being fat is not fun what do you think about is food but then again at my advanced age you're only thinking about a couple things food, naps and sex but then you get to my age you'll just settle for porn you know because actual sex takes work um <laughs> okay now that I'm fully distracted uh, the conundrum is do I still think about cheeseburgers or do I think about sex cheeseburgers are far easier <laughs> maybe that's why I'm fat not getting sex anymore Anyway, we're going to move right the hell along. So, where the hell were we? <laughs>
So we've got our hunger. We've checked to see if it's less than 100. If so, then we're going to go ahead and add to our hunger. And then we need to go ahead and grab a reference to our static mesh. And we need to set visibility V. Control C, Control V, because we're going to need two of those. So at that point, and we need to do our um, other thing too. So, well, let's go ahead and add this in here. Delay of. Yeah, I'm just making a mess of this. A delay of 10 seconds. And then set that back to true. I've got this in here that wasn't really the next step I needed to do. So I'm just going to move these out of the way for now. So what we needed to do here was we need to do a health a hunger check. Just like we did before. And I'm just going to drag off from here. And we want to find out if our float is greater than float or our hunger is greater than 100. If so, then we need to come back over here and we need to set hunger and we need to move that no move you to right here and I'm still forgetting one thing because I'm being absolutely stupid we need a branch node we need that connected into here so now if our hunger is now above 100 then we need to set our hunger back to 100 we don't want it to go over in other words that way you're not sitting at 120,000 hunger because you just ran around and got all the damn cheeseburgers so that should in effect take care of our, our food so let's actually go ahead and grab our food master chuck it in the map and let's go test it out alright so now we step on this and we're we're hungry now so I'm gonna run over here and grab a cheeseburger it goes away now we wait 10 seconds and it should come back now we're set to 10 seconds anyway on our hunger system so I'm gonna grab it and one thing we did forget to do was change the collision so I gotta go back in there and fix that because I'm still stepping on on a cheeseburger even though it's not here so let's go ahead and fix that and our cheeseburger works so I want to click on my static mesh scroll down to collision presets no collision compile and save now technically speaking we could actually come in here and copy all of this And we're going to have to change it. We're going to cheat just a little bit right here. And we're going to come in here and create a new blueprint class, actor, and our drink master. And we're going to go ahead and open it. But now we need to find a drink to use for our, our static mesh. So let's look over here in the props. Um that's a sign that would be huge um, I may still use it but I know that there is a soda can here so we'll just use that for now so let's make sure we have it selected soda can selected and add component static mesh here and then we want to add a component of a box collision not a boxy, but a box collision. And compile, save. Let's go ahead and resize this. Um, I'm going to say 0.3. And then I'm going to manually size this and move it up a little bit lovely 
just absolutely lovely. Now we go to our event graph, delete this stuff, and now we're going to have some problems here because this doesn't exist in here. And we need to go ahead and add event on component begin overlap. And you want to come from other actor to here, connect this to here, since we're cheating. And we're not doing hunger. We need to get our thirst. If I knew how to spell, connect that to there, delete the hunger. And let's go ahead and raise you up. And I know I'm going to need get thirst. I'm going to need new. New. Do set thirst. And I can copy and paste these as I need to. So we're going to connect this one up to here. Delete that one. Move it up to here. No, move. No, you turd. Get up there. And we're going to connect this to here, this to here, and this to here. Delete that and connect that to there. This is cheating, but it's a little bit faster. It can be more confusing, but if you know how to be lazy correctly, then you're good to go. And I want to control C, control V, and then connect that to there. No, you ask clown, connect. So it's easy to screw things up whenever you're getting lazy like this. Because now we need to bring in a reference to our Sodi pop here and here. So let's go ahead and that needs to be 100. If you're good enough at being lazy, then you can get away with doing stuff like this, but I it's always better to actually make it as you go. So casting to our player, we're getting a thirst. We're checking to see if our thirst is less than 100. If it is, then we can get a copy of our thirst. We're going to add 25 to that. And then we're going to check to see if our thirst is above 100. If it is, then we're going to set it back to 100. And then we're good. And except for the fact that you need to be connected to you, or else you'll give me an error. So that should work. Compile and save. And now we can go back to our drink master. Hit play. And there we go. Let's get thirsty. It works. We didn't um, get rid of collision, so let's go ahead and get thirsty again. Wait for it to respawn. 10 second respawn. And there we go. And we're good. Now, go back into Drink Master because I are stupid and go back in here and say no collision. Compile and save. And now our Drink Masters and our Food Masters are done. Our Health Kit Master is done. And we have some testing to allow us to sap down our hunger and our thirst. Now, really quickly, so I can try to squeeze this in here. In our player character we were looking at the idea of a sprint key. So, what we want to do is... Well, I'll screw it for right now. Let's just move this over to here. Just to get it out of the way. Let's... My cheaty way of doing this for setting it up so I don't have to try to remember everything is to just type in escape. And I want keyboard event escape. I'm not going to use the escape key. What I want is to come up here to the input key, keyboard, and I want left shift. So I'll scroll down the key, uh, scroll down the keyboard list 
to left shift and whenever I press it I want to sprint when I want to when I let go of it I want to stop sprinting so the next thing I want to do is go to my character movement and my current running velocity is set to 600 for now we're going to change that to 300 hit compile and save so I want to get a reference to and I probably won't need it but I'm gonna grab it anyway um, I want to set max walk speed and I'm gonna control C and control V connect the target together with that and what I want to do is on pressed and on released connect both of those together and this is really hard and complicated and takes forever to do I know right so from there well, I want to set my wax well, my max walk speed to 600 whenever I press the left shift key but whenever I let go of it I want to set it back to 300 compile and save and let's quickly test to make sure that that works so now I'm walking, I hit the shift key, and I can sprint, and now I can walk, now I can sprint, now I can walk. So, okay, it works. So I can sprint and walk. So the next thing, really quickly, let's go ahead and say, um, uh, do, 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 um, this is probably not the way I want to do this and I'll probably after after I take my break and come back I'll have a better way for doing this but let's add a delay and huh, no um, delay you know I really gotta learn how to spell that would be helpful so delay of one second and then let's um, get a reference to our stamina and let's do new float minus float and then let's go ahead and set our stamina Gotta remember the correct way of doing this. Um, my brain is just short circuiting right now. It's been a hell of a day. Mm, no. Um, stamina minus one. Set stamina. And I want it to loop back. All right, this is not the right way to do it, and I will remember how to do it, and I will fix this. But in theory, yeah, I, I will I will come up with a better way of fixing that to where this actually works. But that's got our sprint working, and what I'll do after I uh, take a quick break is I will set it to where. Um, I'll set a variable and at this point we'll come in here and new variable is running question mark and then what I want to do is I want to set that so at this point I want to set is running as as true no from here idiot um, yeah so set running to true and yeah we did need another one over here anyway so I'm only half stupid or doubly stupid either one so whenever I, I hit the key I start sprinting and I set the is running and then whenever I let go of it I set is running as false so we'll leave it at that I'll take my break and we'll come back for part three here in about 10-15 minutes and we will set it to where when we are in our are running I mean, we could change that to is sprinting, is 
sprinting. And they changed it right there for me already. So it, when we are sprinting, it'll start draining our stamina bar. And maybe even add it to where it drains our thirst a little bit too. So our th the more we sprint, when we get down to zero sprint, and we'll actually have to move this around a little bit too, because we'll ask then, is our stamina above zero? Then, you know, if or if stamina equals zero, then set can sprint to to whatever. We'll set up a whole sprint system with stamina bar and the whole stamina function whenever we get back from from break. Um, that way we can not only set it up for this, to where when you're sprinting you're going to drain stamina and it'll keep going down until it's to zero and then we'll set it um, another variable as can sprint. That way um, we can check here, like when we're at this point, before we can actually say, okay, now set our speed, um, we could add in a branch key right here. And from there, we can bring in this one and say, okay, can we sprint? If the answer is yes, then we can do that. Later on, we could even come back in here and off of the false node say, hey, no, I don't have enough stamina, so you can't sprint or whatever. We'll put a, a message to, to flash up on the screen. But for now, this is good enough. Let me get a, a quick 10 minute break and then refresh my, my glass and we'll pick up and start working on the, the full stamina system. Sound like a wiener? Hmm. So yes, all these videos that I'm doing are automatically saved and will be present for you to come back and watch later. So I'm going to go ahead and get my 10 minute break and I will resume with part three and we'll, we'll come up with a good stamina system. All right, we'll see you very soon.